Lord, the uh, first matter with which I was intending to deal is uh, the uh, action taken by the leadership corps in connection with elections. And I would refer the tribunal to a new document, D43, which will become GB540. Uh, well, I understand that the tribunal have copies of that document. That is uh, a letter from the NSDAP District Bremen, dated the 26th of May, 1936, and addressed to uh, Christleiters, the district organization leader, as it is translated, appears as Christleiters on the German. And uh, it is an instruction in respect to the Reichstag elections of March, 1936. In view of a demand by the Secretary of the Interior, party member Dr. Frick, a report has to be made on civil servants who did not perform their duties in voting on the 29th of March. As far as such, case, uh, as far as such case, cases are known in your Orts group or in your Stunk, Stutzpunkt, Lord Stutzpunkt, I understand, is a... Uh, uh, somewhat less than an Orts group and uh, was eventually abolished, but in 1936 it still existed. You will report them to me by name till latest 3rd of June. The information will have to be correct under all circumstances. And then the last paragraph, my lord, this circular has to be destroyed immediately after this matter is settled. Well, the next document is a document D897, which becomes GB541. And uh, that is a document in connection with the plebiscite of uh, 1938. The point I make, first point I make on that is that it shows the, that uh, the uh, activity referred to in the letter I've just mentioned was not an isolated case. Well, <coughs> the second point upon this document is that it shows the close cooperation between the uh, security police and the uh, political leaders. Uh, on page one of that document appears a special order dated the 4th of April, 1938 from the security service of the Reichsführer SS at Erfurt, which is um, in uh, Thuringia, the Gau, which circle was Gauleiter. It's uh, top secret, strictly confidential, addressed to all heads of sections and to Stutzpunktleiters. Stutzpunktleiters are to report not later than 1800 hours on the 7th of April 1938 all persons in their district about whom it is safe to assume with 100% probability that they will vote no at the impending plebiscite. Don't forget the International Jehovah's Witnesses. Heads of sections are to support Stutzpunktleiters locally as much as possible in this matter. This matter is also to be carried out in closest cooperation with Ortsgruppenleiters of the party. The Ortsgruppenleiters will be instructed by the Außenstellenleiter, head of the branch office, personally after 1800 hours on the 5th. Uh, I think I can omit the next paragraph. Then I go on. The tremendous responsibility which the Stutzpunktleiters have, in particular with regard to this report, 
is stressed once more. The Stutzpunktleiters must clearly understand the potential consequences for the persons contained in their report. It must be particularly strongly considered whether the persons who impart such information to the Stutzpunktleiters and from whom the Stutzpunktleiters make their inquiries are not motiv motivated by personal reasons. Even political leaders are not accepted from this. The confidential nature of this order is again emphasized. The order is to be minutely memorized and thereafter destroyed immediately. Every Stutzpunktleiter is personally responsible to me for the complete destruction of the order. The reasons for the uh, necessity for accuracy appear from the following documents. On page two, there are set out uh, certain sections of the population about uh, uh, whom inquiries have got to be made and who have to be particularly watched. You can see in the first paragraph, increased attention is to be devoted uh, to participation in and the results of the plebiscite, particularly in small towns and villages. It must above all be ascertained whether the, the opponents are to be sought in Marxist ideological opposition circles. Uh, then uh, under the heading Catholicism, I would draw the attention of the tribunal to number two. Was any attitude expressed during church services in similar meetings? Has the witness got a copy of this document? Give it to me. He had uh, reached um, the uh, paragraph number two under Catholicism on the second page of the document D897. Uh, was any attitude expressed during church services and similar meetings? Well, perhaps I might be allowed to ask one question of the witness upon that. Witness, if the Ortsgruppenleiter is charged with uh, making uh, reports on these matters, would it be the Block and Sellenleiters that he would ask for information as to what was expressed in the various church services throughout his Orts group? Nine. Would you tell the tribunal who it would be if it would not be these Selen lighters and block lighters? Derartige vertrauliche Informationen, wenn sie schon gefordert worden wären, hätte der Ortsgruppenleiter sich selbst besorgt. Do you think the Ortsgruppenleiter would be able to attend every church service in his Ortsgruppe himself? Do you think that's physically possible for any Ortsgruppenleiter? Nein, das hätten Sie nicht können. Aber Sie würden für solche Informationen auch immer besondere Männer gehabt haben, bei denen Sie sich Rat und Auskunft geholt haben würden. Ich habe es Ihnen gesagt, und dann werde ich es lassen, dass diese speziellen Männer, die sie mit Advice und Informationen haben, die Zell- und Blockleiter sind, sind sie nicht? Nein, das waren Sie nicht. Oh, well, well, we'll leave that. Well, the next heading is Protestantism. I again draw attention to paragraph two under that heading. Was any attitude expressed about the Anschluss or the plebiscite during services? And the next paragraph, what comment did the church press make? And again, number five, were the bells of all religious communities rung on the evening of the ninth? 
following the Führer's speech in Vienna, would it be the uh, witness, would it be the Block and Selenlighters who would report whether the church bells were rung on that evening in their districts? Das hätten Sie sagen können, denn wenn Sie geläutet worden wären, hätten auch die Block- und Zellenleiter das gehört. And I turn to the next page of the document, the uh, penultimate paragraph. It is suggested that the election officials are contacted in a suitable manner where necessary. The exertion of any kind of pressure must, however, be desisted from. But I turn to the next page, page three of the English translation, which is a, a report from uh, the branch office of the uh, security service at Vicenci, dated the 25th of April, uh, and we begin to see how the uh, <coughs> instructions regarding the election were carried out. Prior to the election, party member Fritcher completed a register of all persons suspected of voting no. On the election day, every person included on this list received a specially selected official voting paper, which was marked with a number imprinted by means of a colorless typewriter. And then it describes how the procedure worked. The next page, I quote from the middle of the large paragraph, the election official uh, did not throw the envelope into the voting box immediately, but tried to push it under the paper end, which is situated on the voting box, to cover the slit, so as to be able to open the envelope later at an opportune moment. The next document, next page, another report from another branch of the security service, to all Ortsgruppenleiters of the NSDAP, of the Christ of Erfurt. On their appearance in your Ortsgruppen area for the purpose of carrying out their voting duty, the undermentioned persons are to be especially watched and the Kreisleitung of Erfurt is to be notified immediately. Thereafter it sets out a list of names and lastly, by order of the Kreisleiter, this matter is to be treated as strictly confidential. Uh, on the next page, there is another report about uh, a Jehovah's Witness, Robert Searing, and his wife who appeared in the voting center on Sunday morning and deposited their vote after both had been advised of their duty to vote by the police in Griefstedt and had been threatened with the removal of their child in case of non-participation. The next document, still on the same subject, is D902. Which will become GB542. On the first page of that exhibit, we have a, a report to, sent to the Erfurt branch office of the security service, marked confidential. Uh, it's not clear who it is signed by. It's dated the 7th of April, 1938, and commences thus. After thorough and most careful examination, in the area of the Ortsgruppe of Nolchendorf and in the closest cooperation with the Ortsgruppenleiter, we have come to the following conclusion. 
following persons will, with 100% probability, vote no at the forthcoming plebiscite. And then after setting out the names, it gives a, what they call explanations in the case of each. Explanation one, Wilhelm Messing, taken into protective custody in 1933 because of illegal activity for the Communist Party, and so on. Uh, two, taken into protective custody in 1933 for slandering the SA. Well, I don't think I need bother with anything further on that page. I draw the attention of the tribunal to the last three paragraphs on the next page. Must be reported as being an enemy of the state. Be described as a morally totally de degenerate man, and it is necessary to lock the same up in spite of his age, which is 70 years old. Amongst other things, he referred to the German troops on their entry into Austria as loafers. Sufficient witnesses as to Hartung are available. Lord, on the next page, another report in connection with the plebiscite. I would draw the attention of the tribunal to the penultimate paragraph. The wife of the 100% Jew, Bielshowski, who was dragged along just before closing time of the plebiscite, voted no, as can be proved. Right. Turn to some pages ahead, page seven of the English translation. Which describes how the votes were screened in another area by a ribbonless typewriter. And then again to page nine of the uh, translation. Another report, the labourer Otto Wiegand had to be requested four times to record his vote on the day of the election and finally only voted under force. And the next report on the same page, the married woman Frieda Scheiner did not vote in spite of being repeatedly invited to do so. The above is a fanatic member of the former International Association of Jehovah's Witnesses. The husband, who has the same opinions and who has recently, was recently involved in criminal proceedings because of them, recorded to his vote. To be sure, this was probably exclusively for fear of renewed arrest. The, uh, the only other portion of that document that I refer to is on page 11, where it's shown an extract from the local newspaper recording the United German vote, which has been obtained by the security service and the, with cooperation of the leadership corps in the way in which we've seen. Lord, Again, to emphasize that these were not isolated, these were not isolated cases, uh, I would refer the tribunal to a, a document which has already been put in, and uh, it will be found on page 91 of the uh, small document book that Sir David handed to the tribunal yesterday. Page 91 of that book page 118 and 119 of the German. It's document R142, US 481. Now that will be seen uh, is a uh, report again from the security service, but this time in Koblenz. 
I read the second paragraph. The high percentage of no votes and invalid votes has its reason in nearly all cases in the religious attitude of the population, irrespective of whether they are Catholics or Protestants. The district manager, and Lord, that in the original is the Kreisgeschaftsführer, who is one of the staff officers on the Kreis, of the Kreisleiter. The Kreisgeschaftsführer of the Kreis Kochem gave the assurance that it was mostly women who voted no or invalidly. As became known here, a supervisory control was ordered uh, at several uh, of... Uh, uh, Mr. Gilbert Jones, this is already in evidence, isn't it? Well, it is in evidence. Yes, I don't think you need going to go into it. I'm much obliged. I only drew the attention of the tribunal to it. And uh, uh, one further document, which is also in evidence, uh, will be found at page 55 of that same document book. where demonst 55 and then 54, uh, the documents being PS 849, which is US 354, and 848, US 353, uh, which describes how the party, the two documents together, describe how the party carried out demonstrations. Uh, Mr. Jones, uh, I don't think uh, it, you ought to um, comment upon documents uh, which are already in evidence, unless they're documents which the witness can throw light upon. Yeah. If, if, if Her Lordship pleases, it's a little difficult uh, to make the point which I would have made in cross-examining the witness on these documents if I only confine myself to the new ones without drawing the attention of the tribunal to other documents which relate to the same matter. Very if they're, documents, they're not new documents and you want to cross-examine the witness about them, you can put them to the witness. If I like please. Well, I'll, I'll leave that particular subject now. Uh, the uh, other subject upon which I had intended to cross-examine this witness is the euthanasia or mercy killing and the part that the core political leaders played in uh, those murders. Uh, Lord, this is a new document, uh, D906. Which becomes GB543. I would refer, first of all, to the uh, second of the uh, three documents which are printed on the first page of that uh, exhibit, number two, Martin Borman, 24th September 1940. Uh, a letter from the National Socialist German Workers' Party, Führer's deputy, to the Gauleitung of Franconia for the attention of Kreisleiter Zimmermann. Your letter of the 13th of September 1940 was given to me by party member Hoffmann. The commission which was working at Neun Detelshaus is under the control of Reichsleiter Buller. The text of the notifications of relatives is being variously worded, as I was once more assured yesterday. It can, however, naturally happen that sometimes two families living close together, uh, close to each other, receive similarly worded letters. It is natural that the representatives of the Christian ideology speak against all the Commission's measures. It must be equally natural that all party offices should, as far as necessary, support the work of the Commission. Uh, then I go back to number one on that page. Uh, 
Gow stabs Amplite, Amplita, Franconia. Selma, that's another staff officer on the Gow staff. Handwritten note, 11040. Justice. Visit from party member Blankenberg, Berlin. Action begins in the near future. So far, hardly any mishaps have occurred. 30,000 dispatched. Further 100,000 to 120,000 are waiting. The circle of those who are initiated is to be kept very small. If necessary, a Kreisleiter is to be notified in good time. Uh, and then it goes on, the Führer gave the order, the decree is ready, at present only clear cases, that is 100% ones, are being settled. Later an expansion will take place. From now on notification will be given in a, and it's not clear from the print, four. And then at the end of that uh, document, Kreisleiter Selma must be in four. I go to number three, which is a situation report by the Kreisleitung of Erlanger, headed Elimination of Mental Patients. On orders from the Ministry of the Interior, a commission consisting, among others, of a North German doctor and a number of students appeared some time ago at the local sanatorium and nursing home. And it describes how it examined the patients, uh, which were to be transferred to another institution on orders from the Reich Defense Commissar. Uh, that a Berlin transport company was to carry out the transfer. And the head of the institution was to follow the directives of this company which was in possession of the list of names. In this way, three transports with a total number of 370 patients were in the meantime transferred to Sonnenstein near Perna and to the Linz district. I think I can, it says a further transport to leave in January of next year. And I go on a few lines. Strangely enough, various relatives received notification after the transportation, that their patients had died. In some cases, pneumonia, and in others, an infectious disease were given as the cause of death. At the same time, the relatives were further informed that it had been necessary to cremate the body and that if they were interested, they could have the clothing of the deceased sent to them. The registry office of Erlangen was also informed by the institution of the various cases of death. And again, either pneumonia or an infectious disease was given as the cause of death. Illnesses which had no connection with the previous medical history, so that it is to be assumed that it is here a case of false statements. The population is terribly disturbed about the transfer of patients because they are connected with the cases of death which are becoming known in rapid succession. They are speaking partly openly, partly secretly, about an elimination of patients for which there is no legal foundation. In these war times, such unrest among the population has a doubly unfavorable effect. Moreover, the events described above give the church and religious circles cause to revive their attitude against national socialism. Under which um, part of Article 6 of the uh, uh, Charter does this come? Well, it would come under crimes against humanity with respect. But uh, uh, connected with war? Well, uh, with respect, yes, because the purpose of this extermination of imbeciles and old people was to rid the Reich of unproductive elements. Well, I, I cannot for the moment give you the exact uh, reference where that appears, but it does appear uh, upon one of the documents.
No, that is a, a handwritten addition uh, to that document uh, in the handwriting of the Kreisleitung, uh, or rather, I beg your pardon, a handwriting addition, original extract from the situation report of the Kreisleitung of Erlangen. Uh, the next document, Lord, I needn't deal with it at length, the point being that Kreisleiter is again involved and uh, the general knowledge of the operations which were taking place. Mistakes in the notification of death. One family, for instance, receiving two urns for one patient. Number five on the next page uh, is uh, much the same, coming from Lauf. I would draw, only draw the tribunal's attention to the middle of uh, the large paragraph towards the end. The doctor also informed me that it was well known that the commission consisted of one SS doctor and several subordinate doctors. Now the next uh, uh, document is on page 10, number 12, where we have a, uh, a, a protest, or rather an inquiry, about the death of a relative from a Mrs. Mary Kerr. And uh, I mentioned that because it uh, also, uh, the same incident is also referred to in another document, PS 1696, which the uh, tribunal will find, uh, no, it's a new document, and I'll hang it up. It will become GB 544. Uh, PS a document, uh, I would ask you to look at the second page of that document, <laughs> where you have a, a letter uh, from the uh, Reich Minister of the Interior to the gauss tabs Amtsleiter uh, in Nuremberg. Uh, he forwards Mrs. Uh, Kerr's letter and uh, the importance of that document is uh, at the bottom, in ink. Ortsgruppenleiter party member Pop is of opinion that one can inform Mrs. Kerr she is calm and circumspect. The document also bears the stamp of the Kreisleiter, who has been informed. Lord, if I might return quite briefly to the document we were looking at, D906, page 6 of that document. Uh, the Ortsgruppenleiter in Absberg uh, is writing about incidents which occurred on the occasion of the latest removal of mentally defective persons from an institution in that town, a sanatorium in that town. He writes to the Kreisleiter. Uh, he encloses a report of which took place, which uh, again only emphasizes the uh, public knowledge of what was happening. And uh, 
Then again on page eight. Another Kreisleiter. This time in Bavaria, well, uh, in Weissenberg, Bavaria. Writes about the same disturbances. And you see that that goes to the Gau staff officer in Nuremberg. At the top of the following page, the Ortsgruppenleiter is involved. Ortsgruppenleiter Reuschel is furthermore of opinion that he should speak about the removal of the inmates, if possible, at the next meeting of party members, in order to give the facts, and above all, to squash the rumours that have arisen that the inmates would very soon be put out of the way, done away with, or poisoned. And then at the bottom, you see another handwritten note. The organization's lighter, another political lighter on the staff uh, of the uh, Hoheitstragers, is to be informed. Now that concludes the uh, evidence that I was going to ask this witness about. There is one general matter which perhaps tribunal would allow me to put a few questions to him on. Or perhaps, first of all, I might ask you this on that evidence, witness. In view of the documents that you've seen, did you yourself ever have any knowledge of this so-called mercy killing? that was going on? <coughs> es wurde mir einmal ein Gerücht zugetragen, dass irgendwo in Süddeutschland Geisteskranke beseitigt würden. Ich habe daraufhin pflichtgemäß sofort bei meiner Gauleitung Rückfrage gehalten und nach kurzer Zeit Bescheid bekommen, dass dieses nicht an dem wäre und dass ich in Zukunft derartige Anfragen auch nicht wieder stellen sollte, die ich mir ja eigentlich selbst als unvernünftig vorstellen müsste. Why did you have not to make such inquiries? Weil, weil ich aus Kreisen der Volksgenossen von solchen Gerüchten gehört hatte. Did you know that colleagues of yours, the core political leaders, were cooperating in that system of Murder? Nein, das habe ich niemals gewusst und geahnt. Now, let me ask you about one other matter. <laughs> you uh, told the tribunal that yesterday that there was no core of political leaders. Is that right? Jawohl. That's not correct, is it? They were recognized officially as the core of political lighters, were they not? Es ist vom Chor der politischen Leiter gesprochen worden, und zwar in der Absicht, dem ein oder den anderen für sein, Be für sein Auftreten in der Öffentlichkeit bessere Manieren beizubringen. Und man hat deshalb auch auf Offiziere und Chorstudenten verwiesen, sie sollten Beispiel sein. Ein offizielles Chor der politischen Leiter hat es nicht gegeben und konnte es auch nicht geben, weil die Männer immer wieder wechselten und aus den allerverschiedensten Sparten unserer Volksgenommen, Volksgenossen genommen werden mussten. They were a 
called a core of political leaders because on becoming a political leader, you became a member of that core. Isn't that the position? Da es kein eigentliches Korps der politischen Leiter gab, konnte man auch bei der Ernennung kein Mitglied werden. And the uh, political leaders are referred to as a core of political leaders in the official organization book of the NSDAP, are they not? I can give you the references. Ich, kann es ich bin überzeugt, dass Sie das können. Sie haben dieses Buch. Ich möchte Ihnen unter Hinweis auf meinen Eid noch einmal erklären, dass ich bisher nicht Zeit gefunden habe, dieses Buch aufmerksam zu lesen, weil die eigentlichen Aufgaben vordringlicher waren als die Lektüre dieses Wunschtraums, denn anders kann ich dieses Buch nicht bezeichnen. Ich habe eine Frage zu dem Dokument. Ich habe eine Frage zu dem Dokument D897. Das war das erste, was vorgelegt wurde. Ein Schreiben bei Sicherheitsdienst Außenstelle Erfurt, unterschrieben von einem Außenstellenleiter. Es ist gerichtet an alle Referenten und Stützpunktleiter. Der Herr Anklagevertreter sagte, der Stützpunkt, der hier bezogen ist, ist eine Parteidienststelle. Ist diese Ansicht richtig, wenn Sie lesen, dass das Schreiben gerichtet ist an alle Referenten und Stützpunktleiter und ein Schreiben der SS ist. Mir ist das auch sofort aufgefallen und ich wäre von selbst darauf zurückgekommen. Es kann sich nur um einen Stützpunktleiter des SD gehandelt haben. Denn es gab damals innerhalb der politischen Leitung keine Stützpunkte mehr, sondern nur Ortsgruppen. Und im Übrigen ist in diesem Schreiben weiter unten ja auch ausdrücklich an zweiter Stelle der Ortsgruppenleiter erwähnt. Jawohl, es, es heißt dort, ebenfalls ist diese Angelegenheit mit den Ortsgruppenleitern der Partei durchzuführen, in engster Zusammenarbeit. Ist dieses Schreiben also gerichtet von einer unteren SS-Stelle an eine untere Parteistelle? Ich habe das Schreiben im Moment nicht vorliegen, aber ich erinnere, dass es an die untergeordneten Stellen der Außenstelle gerichtet war und dass darin gesagt wurde, man solle sie auch mit den Ortsgruppenleitern in Verbindung setzen. Es fällt mir allerdings auf, dass der Ortsgruppenleiter erst einen Tag vorher in Kenntnis gesetzt werden soll, während der Empfänger des Schreibens schon zwei Tage vorher Kenntnis und Unterlagen für seine Arbeit bekam. Das Vertrauen zur Partei... Bitte langsam, die Dolmetscher kommen nicht mit. Das Vertrauen zur Partei muss also nicht ganz groß gewesen sein. Wurde dann der Ortsgruppenleiter hier auf dem gewöhnlichen Befehlsweg der Partei unterrichtet oder waren damit die höheren Parteistellen übergangen? In diesem Fall ist die Benachrichtigung unvorschriftsmäßig, denn sie hätte über die höheren Parteistellen erfolgen müssen. Kann ich also den Schluss ziehen, dass es möglich ist, dass die oberen Parteistellen von dieser Aktion der unteren SS-Stellen nichts gewusst hat. Durchaus. 
Ich habe dann keine Fragen mehr dazu. Can retire. 